What is the worst type of scoliosis? Scoliosis is an unnatural sideways bending scoli curvature in the spine that rotates into the concavity of the scoliosis. A scoliosis we know is a progressive condition that is normally progressing during growth and development. And therefore, since it's a progressive condition, it has its very nature to worsen over time. Scoliosis can range from very mild to moderate to severe and, and very, very severe. And the condition severity is normally determined by a measurement known as a Cobb angle. The higher the Cobb angle, the more severe the condition is. When we look at scoliosis, we know approximately 80% of all cases are classified as idiopathic scoliosis. And idiopathic scoliosis means that there's no known cause. We know scoliosis affects all ages. However, it's mostly associated with adolescent idiopathic scoliosis that's the most common age that it's diagnosed. However, we don't believe we catch all cases of idiopathic scoliosis during adolescent stages, and many cases go undiagnosed in the adolescent stage and then continue to progress in, into the adult form and then get diagnosed in the adult form, even though it was an adolescent development. The remaining 20% are also associated with known causes, so therefore they're not diagnosed as idiopathic scoliosis, they are associated with a known cause. Idi Idiopathic scoliosis is normally considered to be a typical pattern, meaning that the curvature will normally bend to the right on the thoracic spine and the left in the lumbar spine. When we look at ones that have other causations, they can form an atypical pattern, meaning they're, due the, they're bend in the opposite direction. They'll bend to the left in the thoracic spine and to the right in the lumbar spine. The most common type that we look when we see this is something called neuromuscular scoliosis. And this is literally caused by a neuromuscular condition, something like cerebral palsy, Marfan syndrome, or other types of conditions that could possibly associate the neuromuscular systems of the body. Congenital scoliosis is typically another type that can lead to an atypical scoliosis develop presentation. And this is when there's a malformed bone within the spine that develops in utero and patients are born with scoliosis. Degenerative scoliosis is also a type of scoliosis that can develop an atypical presentation. And this is normally caused by natural age-related degeneration, but occurs abnormally and asymmetrically leading to a scoliosis to occur. Meaning that we know the spine should uh, normally, there's natural age-related degeneration, but it becomes abnormal when it becomes asymmetrical and more focused on one side versus the other, which can lead to a spinal curvature to occur that normally diagnosed later on in life. So when we look at all these types of scoliosis, which is the most severe of the conditions? Now, every case is completely unique. And if left untreated, many cases will progress because we know scoliosis is a progressive condition. However, atypical types tend to be more complicated because of the unlayering causes associated with the development of scoliosis. Typically in idiopathic scoliosis cases, we know spines bend, like I mentioned, they bend um, to the left in the lumbar spine and into the right in the thoracic spine. When we look at atypical, the, there's, an, uh, there's an abnormal presentation. Now, it doesn't mean it's always that way, but it means that if there's an opposite bend, there could be an underlying pathology. And we look at any time there's an underlying pathology and scoliosis, it complicates the condition. Normally in idiopathic cases, there's nothing else wrong with the patient. They, are, they can function, they, can, they have no pain, they can function well, there's not many other issues. So normally, especially in adolescent cases, normally we can treat them without any kind of worry or about complications or any things that may occur. However, when we have atypical presentations associated with these other causes, these underlying pathologies um, definitely complicate the problem. So when we look in general, the worst type of scoliosis would be a neuromuscular scoliosis because these can be very difficult to treat because of the other conditions associated with the curve. Normally, treating the scoliosis is very similar to treating any other type of scoliosis, like an idiopathic scoliosis. But when we have a neuromuscular condition associated with it, it can sometimes limit the treatment. And when it limits the treatment because of this neuromuscular condition, like spina bifida, muscular dystrophy, cerebral palsy, neurofibromatosis, L. Downer syndrome, these conditions can complicate things. And when we look at neuromuscular conditions, it causes normally a disconnect between the brain, the body, the muscles, and the connection.
connective tissue, and we have to take all these other things into factor. The treatment that focuses on the larger neuromuscular condition is normally not expected to reduce the scoliosis. So most patients, we also have to deal with the scoliosis as well. And it also, neuromuscular scoliosis patients can also become non-ambulatory, meaning they don't have the ability to stand and walk. So now we're limited in how much therapy and rehabilitation and exercise that we can perform. Every case of scoliosis is a progressive condition, and we know scoliosis is uncurable. And therefore, we know what treatment is about managing the progression of scoliosis and reducing the scoliosis size, so therefore patients can be as functional as, proper, as possible. When we have patients that have neuromuscular conditions and scoliosis, the function's already altered. So it's very, very difficult to assess how effective we are at improving function, even though we can assess how much we're reducing the curve. Now, with some neuromuscular cases, as we reduce the curve, we see a lot of neuromuscular symptoms improve, knowing that there is a relationship there. However, with some other patients, that's not there. So our goal is to try to manage and reduce the curve as much as possible, despite the causation. No treatment results can ever be guaranteed to work, but in many cases, improvements can be worked towards and we can see changes. And here at the Centered, we've treated all types of scoliosis cases, including neuromuscular scoliosis cases with success at reducing and managing the progressive nature of scoliosis. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.